I want to start this video off by saying everybody owes everybody an apology. That's all I'm going to say. From everybody, the PlayStation, Sony ponies getting on all Xbox is dead, the Xbox fans returning their Xbox, throwing it out, saying, oh, I'm never supporting them again, all this doom and gloom. And everybody owes everybody an apology. The last week online has been terrible from the community to people outside the community everything like that and we finally got our answers that we needed today from phil spencer sarah bond and matt booty and it's nowhere near as catastrophic as everybody was thinking so if you're new to the channel you like xbox news gaming news in general please consider subscribing and leave a like on this video so let's get right into it so for people that don't know if you've been you know under a rock pretty much there's a lot of rumors coming out last weekend and throughout the week of Xbox going third party. This meant games like, well, we've heard even before last week, games like Hi-Fi Rush and see if these potentially coming out on Xbox or Nintendo or PlayStation or Nintendo Switch consoles. And some people didn't like that. Some people didn't care. They said, hey, see if these has been out for, you know, six years at this point. It's a live service game. You want to grow that community. Okay, cool. Hi-Fi Rush, small double-A game from a smaller Japanese studio. Let's get some more eyes on it. Let's expand it. You know, came from technically Bethesda was a third party before that. Let's get that out to more people. And then more rumors started coming out saying, hey, Starfield is on the way. Gears of War collection. Halo's on the way. At that point, all hell broke loose online and everyone just thought, this is the end of Xbox. So Phil Spencer did respond. He said, hey, we got a business update coming next week. People are like, hey, what does business update mean? And we finally got that today. So I'm going to break down everything that was talked about for the most part in three different sections. So they start off with exclusivity. Then he talked about uh, Activision Blizzard a little bit. And then they talked about hardware. So let's start with exclusivity. So the first part of exclusivity was Phil had mentioned that, hey, there's four games coming to other platforms, but he won't say because of, you know, partnerships. And now this kind of leads credence to the whole announcement for Sea of Thieves or Hi-Fi Rush coming to Switch and or PlayStation. And what that means is, hey, there was an rumored Nintendo Direct and normally they want to make that announcement during their Direct or the you know the game studios wants to make the announcement on their own and you don't want to take away from that so he did say there was four games pretty much two single player games and two like bigger live service slash community games now okay would you do Halo Infinite just the multiplayer coming to other platforms do you not want Halo itself on anything you know that that remains to be seen but we did hear hey four games coming out we'll know soon nintendo Rec direct probably tomorrow or next week we'll have to see after the uh you know the announcements today and then phil did confirm hey starfield and indiana jones are not going to other platforms and now this was a big relief for a lot of people i'm sure because that was kind of the big thing like we just got activision we just got bethesda are we going to put all these games everywhere else? Like Starfield was supposed to be that big flagship game for Xbox. Are they putting it out after a year? You know, some people didn't care about it. I personally didn't care that much about it because I felt like Bethesda and Activision were third party uh, studios at first. So trying to get some of that money back from the investments by putting those games everywhere, timed exclusivity, you know, it kind of made sense. But Phil did confirm those games would be staying on the Xbox and you know PC system so that was good to hear as well we also got confirmation that Game Pass would not be fundamentally changing at least for now they they said that was kind of the theme throughout this entire little sit down was all of Xbox's you know fundamental philosophies were going to stay the same they're not going to change Game Pass they're still going to get all Xbox Game Studios in Game Pass day one. They're not going to change the advertisement tiers. They're not doing all these different changes like everybody was talking about. The other thing was, you know, they want to keep working on cross progression and achievements and things like that across all platforms. And that's part of growing with the platform and what Xbox really offers as a service. You know, what, do, what benefits do you get staying with Xbox? And those are the kind of things that they're trying to work on. And then Phil's also asked, what criteria do you have to kind of decide what goes multi-platform? So this was a question when you kind of looked at it throughout this entire thing, you could tell they've been listening to the podcast, they've been reading the stuff on Twitter because they kind of address almost every question people were asking. And I think that was very important. 
like you could tell if you've been listening to the chatter online that that's what they were doing. It kind of sounds like they baked some stuff in and they answered a few other questions like naturally through conversation, not just through the actual questions and things like that. They kind of snuck it in there, which I think was strategic. But, you know, they asked about, OK, what do you decide? How does the game go on Game Pass or goes to other platforms and things like that? So. He said, hey, we looked at games that are at least a year old. So, again, we talked about timed exclusivity and things like that. So it has to pass normally a year. Then the other thing he said is, hey, we're looking at community-driven games. So these are games like, obviously, Diablo came out before Activision Blizzard was purchased. But that will be a you know an example of that. Sea of Thieves. Uh, you know, these bigger service or community-based games. Minecraft. All these kind of things. Just these games that are so big that it wouldn't make sense to keep it just on xbox alone he also said something that a lot of you know economic based people were thinking was he said hey once the game has reached its full potential on xbox like which could mean anything for their own metrics they could see like less amount of active players less downloads less purchases anything like that once you feel like that's plateaued or falling off a cliff okay maybe we want to expand that but he didn't say it's one of these things normally all these things are taken into consideration once you're going to put a game on another platform. And then moving on to Activision Blizzard. So I guess they didn't want to make this a super big thing as a part of this sit down because, you know, they probably have a whole nother thing planned where they're going to say which games are coming, what's going on Game Pass. And they didn't say all, but I'm assuming just from the way they said it, Sarah Bond was asked, OK, what's going on with Activision Blizzard? She said, Activision Blizzard games will be on Game Pass starting with Diablo 4 on March 28th. Now, I think the wording here is very important to pay attention to. She said Activision Blizzard games will be on Game Pass. She didn't say Call of Duty. She didn't say all of them. She didn't say everything's going to be there at once. She didn't say all the old games. She just said Activision Blizzard games will be on Game Pass, which... I don't know. I don't know what that means. I did notice they had an Activision sale uh, last night when I was playing. So I felt like maybe they wanted to do that before they made that announcement. I think that was strategic as well. But at least we know Diablo 4, if you haven't played it, you'll be able to play it March 28th. And then we'll probably get some more announcements for uh, other things to come soon after that. And in the middle of this, this was one of those things where I said she kind of snuck in some other information that people were wondering about. She said, Yes, this will now be available to our 34 million Game Pass users. So she just like snuck that in there. They didn't, you know, talk about it anymore. She just said it. And this kind of, you know, let people know where's Game Pass at. Some people thought it was around 20, 25. Now we're here. It's around 30, almost 35 million, uh, 35 million users. And, you know, if you do the math on that, you know, just assume everyone has the base, you know, uh, version of it. If you do the math real quick, you know, let's say, Let's just say 10 million average. Some people have ultimate. It could be $12. Well, let's just say $10, $10 average. That would be 340 million, right? So 340 million times 12 would be a little over $4 billion a year just from Game Pass subscriptions. Now, that does sound like a lot of money and revenue, but we do know, again, the investments in Activision Blizzard and all these other acquisitions it's you know it's almost a hundred billion dollars so clearly they're trying to expand game pass to get to that 50 million you know 55 60 million so hopefully they can get to that soon and then the last part they're kind of talking about was the hardware side and now this was very important for a lot of people because we've seen people selling their xbox series x's going to gamestop selling all their games losing that whole digital library they don't spend however many years paying for and you know i think this was arguably probably the I don't know. You could kind of say it was the most important segment of the thing because this was kind of the why do I need to still own an Xbox? Are you still going to do it? Like, why am I investing in your ecosystem? So talk to us about that. So they, they talked about hardware still being paramount. Like, that's going to be the main place that people are going to play. You want to have Xbox hardware so that that's your main place you want to play. But also, you can reach people where they're at. So you want this to be the main place people play. But, hey, if we're expanding a little bit, there are people over here that they're invested in, you know, their digital libraries. They have their friends they play with. That's why this cross-save, cross-achievements, all these kind of things that 
Microsoft has invested their money into and for services is very important pillar in Xbox's philosophy. Phil also talked on, spoke on something that he said before. He brought quotes from AMD presidents and other companies that said like, listen, the industry as a whole is stagnant. It is not growing the way people think it's growing. Like the lack, like there's a lack of video game industry growth overall and that's the problem so that's why microsoft is trying to spearhead these different you know initiatives and ways to generate revenue for the industry as a whole because you know as phil said you know we're thinking of yes xbox and xbox consumers but we want to the you know the industry as a whole to get better that's how everyone gets better that's how players exist business grows developers grow all these kind of things and that's what they want to focus on and speaking of that success they brought up power world which we knew was going to come up you know power world a huge success it was like seven million players in four days or something like that number one on steam um and you can only play that through Steam, PC, or, you know, Xbox or Xbox Game Pass, if you want to buy digitally or just play it on Game Pass. And that was a big deal because when you see that type of player growth for new developers, smaller companies, or even bigger companies, they're like, hey, we want to invest with you to put these games on Game Pass. We want to be on all your Xbox services. We like how you're helping developers, things like that. That starts selling your brand. Like, people need to think outside the box of, just selling to consumers. Yes, the consumers are the ones that pay, but these developers being in position to make better games and everything is going to keep the industry going. They're the ones investing in these games that people like. So it's important to sell to them as well. You have to convince other people to want to be on your platform that you can get them to as many players as possible. And then that's how those Game Pass deals get, you know, written up. That's how it goes. And then the last part that Sarah Bond talked about as far as hardware was this kind of drove it home. It was like, listen, we're going to be sharing some, you know, some news on some hardware this holiday season. So I think that all digital system may be coming because that's the only hardware I would think they would be talking about on the holiday. And then she also mentioned future roadmap for other hardware. So that kind of confirms, hey, they're already thinking about the next generation. Hardware still on the way. And she used, I'm going to quote her exactly what she said. She said, it's going to be the largest technical leap we've ever seen in a generation. Now, I feel like a lot of people are going to hear that and think, oh, the graphics are about to be real life. I think it's going to do other things, you know, similar to this PS4 to PS5 and Xbox One, Xbox Series X leap, like how they've introduced like quick resume and the less low times and the frame rate and all that. That's what she's talking about. I think we've just gotten so advanced technologically that's the best thing that you can do as far as improvements. Like the graphics aren't going to be as big of a leap as like PS1 to PS2 or PS3 to PS4. Like I think those days of this giant leap is kind of behind us, but it was good to see again, they're showing like not only we're still invested in hardware, we're still going to push for the next hardware and the, the roadmap for that is going to be coming out pretty soon. And with that, they also talked about backwards compatibility. A lot of people are saying like, hey, what's what's going on with that? Are we going to lose our games? How, you know, and Phil kind of said like, listen, we've been committed to backwards compatibility the same way Windows, you can pull files from 97 and all these old games and things like that and kind of bring it over. Obviously, it's a lot harder with video games, but they are staying committed to backwards compatibility, which is good for a lot of people to hear. That's how you keep long-term investment people staying in your ecosystem. Now, the last thing I said was, hey, what does Xbox mean? What does this stand for? And I think, again, this was them kind of listening to everybody's, you know, thoughts and concerns about like, what is the brand? What do you guys stand for nowadays? And Mad Booty kind of answered this, so this is Bond, and they said, you know, you're playing Game Pass day one. You know, it's play your first features like cross save and cross play and cloud save and all these kind of things, cross progression, all these types of things, being able to play anywhere so you're not limited to just one place to play the games. And, you know, investing back into the industry, you know, when you invest into Xbox, you're investing into other players keeping these features that you love. You're investing into developers being able to keep making the games that you love. So, 
you know, they really drove home the community investment, you know, us all playing together, enjoying it, investing in each other and keeping the company growing. And of course, giving more of those experiences that we've come to love. And that pretty much sums up the entire, you know, little sit down is around 22 minutes. And I think they answered a lot of questions, still some maybe a little unanswered, but we'll probably see in the future. But I think they did answer the questions the best way that they could and the best way to quell all these fears that everybody has had. I'm sure the Internet's blowing up. Everybody's calling each other names and all that. And like, that's the one thing I've learned from this. I never have indulged in I didn't like some of these accounts I didn't even know existed are big on Twitter and whatnot and YouTube. But some people are just they man, they gotta get lives, man. They gotta that touch grass meme was coming to my brain every time I seen it. A lot of people just overreacting, calling people stuff. It it was insane. But um hey, if you're a team Xbox, if you invest if you're, you know, interested in enjoying the ecosystem come on over it's it's going to be great 2024 has got a lot of great games ready to come out and some more unannounced that we'll hear at the uh, summer showcase in june as matt booty said so that's my thoughts on everything y'all let me know what you think in the comment section below again leave a like on this video subscribe if you have not already and i'll catch you on the next one peace